Hi there, and welcome to this relatively rare technical edition of Narrowboat Natterings. Now, some 25 years ago, I used to work in the automotive industry uh, in the rectification area of the paint shop. So uh, it was quite a common thing for me to have to repair areas of paintwork that we wanted to try to avoid having to respray. So the purpose of this video today is to try to give you a little bit of confidence in using abrasive wet and dry papers on your beautiful glossy paintwork. Uh, it's always a little bit scary when you start scratching away at your paintwork. Will it ever come back to where you need to be? So that's what this is all about. So hopefully you take away some confidence from this. The other thing I noticed in this video is that my microphone had developed a fault. It's actually on the lead. so. Just excuse the slight amount of distortion on the vocals and these images that you're seeing right now are absolutely nothing to do with this video at all other than making it a little bit pretty when I'm droning on. So on with the tech. Just staying from parking, mooring up underneath the bridge in Birmingham, thinking we were doing the right thing with a bit of shelter, but actually from under the bridge it was dripping down you get like little calcium stalactites or stalagmites, whatever they are, stalactites, I think. And it's dripping off there, so it's left like calcium, like, like lime scale that you get in your kettle. It's that sort of thing. But it's actually, you can feel it. It's like it's burnt into the paint. So I've got some work to do there. I've had a go already at the top here, and it's actually, it's reduced it, but I'm thinking it needs some more. So just, let me show you what I can do just with tea cut. I'm using a blue tea cut. I don't know if that might just be a bit of a sales thing, I don't know. But let's see what we can do with this bit here. Alone, just, just with tea cut alone. And I think it's going to take out so a lot of the lighter stuff. But where, it's actually, where I can actually feel it's burnt, I'm probably going to have to do a bit more work. So let's see what I've done there. I've just taken the edge off that. Let me see whether that's actually going to polish up as I do with some polishing rags. <laughs> now, so even though it's really shiny all around, so the tea cut's done a nice job, it's still not actually taken out where it's burnt. I can feel that. It's still all in there. There's still a lot of lines there that burnt but this is where people start getting a bit scared because they think i'm not i don't want to rub me nice paintwork with some sandpaper well it's not kind of sandpaper this is the course wet and dry it's quite gentle and i've got three grades here this is called 1500 grade some people refer to this as super fine and you can hardly feel any sort of abrasive of there it's just just a tad coming on from that go to 1200 now I can start to feel that's a little bit rougher. And then there's a, the worst case, there's an 800 there, which is definitely a lot more. Okay, so the key to it is try and reduce things with as fine as a, a, a grade as you can. So tea cut would be your first best bet. If you can go with that, you've, you've hardly touched the paintwork. Let's, let's have a look at the super fine and let's see how that does the job. Now, the important thing with with wet and dry is that you do keep it wet because once the once the um, it gets clogged up and it's not working right so make sure it's wet okay and then try and work it in circular motions if you were to concentrate doing that yes eventually it might polish up nicely but you'll get you'll see a work mark there that you've cut in so if you can keep it going circular Keep it wet. So circular, circular marks. Let's come down to that new, some of that new stuff as well that we've not touched with the tea cut yet. Let's see what happens down here. Now I can, I can feel it under my fingers that it's gone smoother. I can, those lines that I can feel, I can feel them disappearing. You know, soldiers polish their boots, they do it like this, little fine circles. Okay, 
So let's have a look, a look, little look at that. We take that water off there. And obviously what you're going to get, because it's abrasive, you're going to get a dull patch now. You're going to get something that's, because you've, you've actually removed the top surface of paint very minutely, but you have, so there you see, it's now kind of lost those stains. There's evidence there where I didn't go close to the, the coloured lettering, so there's still a little bit there. But fundamentally, that main body's gone. So for purposes of this video, I'm just going to polish that up to show you how that comes up. I can continue that later. So let's go with a little bit of teacup now. So that's one level up. So we'll bring that back up. So reduce the work marks that have the 1500 has caused. Again, just a bit of water sometimes. It just helps move the, the polish around. And I'm not saying it's easy. It does take a bit of effort. But... My job's easy. Your job's easy, Mrs. Lumsden, yeah. Get a better, bit of better cloth. Okay, so if you get a close look at that, you can still see there's 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 still differings of. You can still see the old stripes where it was, but I've not finished polishing it yet. When I polish it, it should all come back to where it was. There's a patch there as well that's still dull, where the 1500's done its job. And there you can see a bit that I haven't worked on properly there. So let's just go back to, let's just try it now with a bit of standard polish. Just, you know, your normal car polish, what you'd use to just clean a car, washing a car. And see whether this, we'll just bring it back to where it needs to be. Again, by keeping that circular motion going, you're making sure that you're spreading the you're spreading the effort. So where you're pressing on, it's not all happening in just one place, which is then going to show through when it's a glossy coat again. Smells nice. Smells lovely. Doesn't smell as nice as you, Mrs. Lumsden. Okay, let's see where we're getting with that. Dry that off. So that's now starting to come really nice. Okay, it's nice and smooth. So I'm still not happy up here. It's a matter of looking back. Once a little bit more tea cut up there, I think. Still a few marks from the 1500 grade. That's there. Yeah. Let me shift that bit off there.
Okay, that's gone now. That area up there that was a bit dull is now gone. Obviously, I want to get that bit off the lettering. So just a bit of normal polish should move that. He says, hopefully, <laughs> there it goes. How often should you polish your face? Like polishing your car, yeah. You just wash and polish it, don't you? You wouldn't polish it to this degree, it's only because I'm trying to dig something out. Yeah. But that's better. If I look hard enough, I can see some evidence. But ultimately, it doesn't look like that anymore, and that's the key to this. So, a little bit of confidence with using wet and dry paper. I might have had to think about going to the 1200 grade, which is slightly coarser. But again, you would then come back. So you go 1200, you then go 1500, you then go uh, T cut, and then the final polish. So it's, if you're cutting something so it's got a harsher cut, you then need to reduce the harshness of the cut, reduce it again, reduce it again, and polish. Hope that makes sense. Bye for now.